team uh, for their invitation. Um, Her Excellency Dr. Fatuma, uh, His Excellency Executive Secretary Dr. Workene, and uh, His Excellency Minister of Agriculture, Mr. Umar, it's a pleasure to, say, to share the stage with you today. Um, on behalf of the um, Global Alliance for Action for Drought Resilience and Growth, it's a pleasure to be here at the Idrisi Steering uh, Committee meeting. We are very concerned about the multiple shocks and stresses the region is facing that are putting a strain on economic development and households. Of concern are the, the prolonged droughts and the negative impact on Putin's unprovoked war on Ukraine and on the food security consequences it has on the region. I look forward to discussing how development partners can continue to support your efforts in achieving sustainable and inclusive development and to address these current shocks and stresses in a holistic and coordinated manner. The Global Alliance has provided considerable financial and technical support to resilience building efforts in the Horn of Africa since EGAT's call for support to end drought and emergencies in the region over a decade ago. Our support has led to improvements in livestock productivity and competitiveness, diversified livelihoods, increased resilience capacities, bolstered better early warning systems, coordination and joint planning interventions, and improvements in government systems. But of course, much work remains to be done. As we provide support and resources in the regions, we acknowledge and appreciate all of the efforts of the EGAT Secretariat, member states, and other actors that have been instrumental in articulating and advocating for a bold vision like the Idrisi strategy, uh, which is a holistic and comprehensive plan. The goal is to build the resilience of communities vulnerable to recurrent droughts in order to achieve sustainable development. Although progress has been made over the years in the region, the number of people in need for humanitarian aid has increased as a result of the multiple shocks previously mentioned, including the current drought and conflict, as well as COVID-19 and desert locusts in the region. Pastoralists, women, children, and cross-border populations are particularly vulnerable to these recurrent shocks. As Global Alliance partners, we remain committed to gathering the political and financial support to build resilience and sustainable development in the Horn of Africa. Not only from donors and development partners, but also from all, all of you as joint partners in this, this, this matter. Uh, together we can make progress here in the region, protecting those most vulnerable and reducing the need for humanitarian relief and promoting inclusive development. Allocating adequate uh, uh, adequate resources in targeting these effectively to address regional challenges is critical to progress towards resilience in prosperous economics and societies. Uh, as we invest resources, tracking progress against goals is hugely important. In order to gauge how we uh, have delivered on implementing regional strategies and countries' development agendas to be as responsive to shocks. We are aware that the shocks and stresses in the region are transcending borders. Hence, we need a multidimensional and collaborative platform that operates across borders and donors, and which puts the actions and responsibilities of EGAD member states here in the regions at the center. As development partners, we at the Global Alliance must continue to taking deliberative steps to have more coordinated and joint efforts with everyone here to achieve a uh, collective impact that is transformational and tailored to the needs of the region. You know, it is a, as a representative of the U.S. government, it's a pleasure for me to have uh, to reinforce the statement which was made by USAID's administra uh, administrator, Samantha Power, on Monday in a press conference in Washington, D.C., uh, where USAID committed $1.3 billion in additional resources to respond to the drought in the Horn of Africa out of which 200 million will be dedicated towards ready-to-use uh, therape therapeutic foods to address nutrition in the area specifically affecting children. Um, this demonstrates the, the solidarity uh, of, the of the American people with those affected by the drought in the Horn of Africa. Just yesterday here in, in Addis Abeba, the U.S. Embassy in Addis announced $55 million for Ethiopia to support food systems and build resilience as consequences to the, the shocks of the that, uh, high food prices 
emanating from the, the war in Ukraine. Um, in order to use these resources effectively, uh, coordination is, is critical. And this is why this meeting today is so important, to maximize our joint effort and impact because the scale of the problem is truly uh, one that we have not seen in a generation. Um, we know that humanitarian assistance is critical and life-saving, but by itself is not enough. We also need to invest in resilience. Uh, in a study that we conducted in 2018 here in Ethiopia, we found that for every dollar we invested in resilience, we saved $3.3 .3 in future humanitarian aid. Therefore, we need to ensure that these scarce resilience resources are spent most effectively. This is especially true in this current drought. Um, we've seen that millions of livestock have already perished. In a normal drought cycle, it takes about four years to recover uh, for pastoralist communities to have a herd size of a viable, si of a viable size. Um, we've also seen that droughts are occurring every three to four years. This means that given current projections, pastoralists, if they recover, they will only recover just in time to be for the next drought cycle to hit, which means that it, it's upon all of us to rethink resilience and recovery in this area. This means strengthening existing social safety nets, more market-oriented pastoralism, diversified uh, livelihoods, and also supporting a transition into a more um, urban uh, population in order to help um, uh, build true resilience and, and establish a, a recovery once that is uh, to occur. Uh, finally, you know, dry shocks have become very common in the region. However, there is no uh, immunity to, to the suffering that a shock causes. It doesn't matter whether it's the first shock or the 20th shock. The, the population, the experience, the pain and the suffering that they experience remains the same. Uh, that is why we as a U.S. government and a member of the Global Alliance as USAID are committed to continue working with all the EGAT member states on addressing the consequences of the drought. Uh, thank you very much.